What's up YouTube? This is Demkeys back again with another Unity tutorial and today I will teach you how to use Unity's particle system. A particle system component simulates fluid entities such as liquids, clouds and flames by generating and animating large numbers of small 2D images in the scene. Good examples of cases where you would use particle systems would be uh, a bonfire or maybe a smoke effect or uh, a waterfall. So let's begin. We will start by placing a particle system in the scene. You can do this by clicking game object, create other and particle system. As you can see our particle system has been created and it is uh, already simulating. So this is the component that actually controls the particle effect well it controls the particle system that's what's called particle system now let me show you something apart from this area for editing you can also open open it up separately in another editor and you can edit it over here not only that but you can also add more particle systems these will become children of the parent particle system you can see that over here so we don't require either of these we are just going to work with this now the particle system component has many modules based on the kind of effect you're looking to achieve you would uh, enable or disable whatever module is required you can enable by checking it and disable by unchecking it before we go into these modules let me explain some of these properties these are these can be thought of uh, as general properties they are like all round they affect they many of these properties affect how the calculations take place in these modules okay so the first property is duration the length of time the particle system is emitting particles if the system is looping this indicates the length of one cycle so to demonstrate this I'm going to uncheck looping and stop this so because we have mentioned five over here so it should only run for five seconds let's see as you can see it stops emitting particles after five seconds next we have looping now looping is going to repeat the cycle over and over again once the duration is complete it's going to repeat basically it's going to loop again and again currently our simulation is stopped if I click simulate it, it's gonna keep going it won't stop next you have pre warm pre warm when when played a pre warmed system will be in a state as if it had emitted one loop cycle and this can only be used if the system is looping so let's select pre warm and see what happens you see that there is a difference between this and this so that's what pre warm does next you have start delay this is the delay in I guess seconds yeah it's the delay in seconds that the particle system will wait before emitting particles this cannot be used together with a pre warmed looping system so just to show you how this works I'm going to add a three second delay and click simulate you see nothing for three seconds and then it starts I'm going to set this back to zero next you have start lifetime this is the lifetime of each particle so basically each particle is going to last for five seconds I think this is in seconds yeah so it's going to last for five seconds and then be destroyed next you have start speed this is the speed uh, the speed of each particle to show you how changing this affects things I'll increase the speed
So at 5, it is this much. So you can see what speed does. Okay, I will change this back to 5. By the way, uh, you're not limited to just these constant values. You can also set curves. For this, uh, for, for these general properties, I'm just going to use constants. But further on in the modules, I will be using curves. Alright, start size. This is the starting size of the particle. If I increase this value, the size of each particle increases. So it's emitting huge particles. Change this back to 1. Start rotation. This is the rotation of the particles. I cannot show you how this is being affected because uh, uh, if I change the rotation then there won't be any effect over here due to the fact that that these are spheres being emitted. But you get the point. If, if it was a square or something then it would have a different rotation. Next is start color. This is the color that the particles will be when they are emitted from the particle system. So they'll start out with that color, like this. I'm going to change this back to white. Then you have the gravity multiplier. So currently, as you can see, these particles are being emitted from the particle system, but they're just going up in the air. And once their life runs out, they're destroyed. There's no gravity affecting them. So we can add gravity to it. Let's change this value to 5. Okay, that's too much. One? Yeah. So, as you can see, the particles are being emitted and they are being shot upwards, but then gravity is pulling them down. I'll change this back to zero. Inherit velocity. This is uh, a little hard for me to explain, but it's... Uh, it's kind of like, okay, I'll give you the example that I got from uh, watching the Unity tutorial video. So if you're in a car, in, if you're in a moving car, and you throw something out of that moving car, now to you, the, the object that you're throwing, it may not look like it has a lot of speed. Now suppose there's somebody standing outside, and your car is passing by that person, and at that time you throw something. To that person, it's going to look like that object is moving at an at at a high amount of uh, speed. High amount of speed. Well, it's moving at in in really high speed. Um, it's kind of the same effect over here. Um, I tried to get this working, but didn't work. Let me let me see if it works now. I'll set this to maybe 100 or 1000, no, 100. Now, I'm sorry, I can't explain this, but it's it kind of works in that way, I guess. Next, you have simulation space. This is the space... Uh, Okay, to explain this, I will have to use, I'll have to show you some of the modules. For now, I'll just tell you what its definition is. Makes particle positions simulate in world space or local space. In local space, they stay relative to the transform. So, oh, yeah, a good example for this would be, now, you can see all these particles moving along with the system. That doesn't look very real. It doesn't look like there's any physics being applied to it. Watch what happens when I change the simulation space to world. So the particles are being simulated in world space, not within the local space of the object itself. That is what, that is the difference between world and local space. I'm going to change this back to local. Next you have play on awake. Play on awake is basically if uh, this object is if this particle system object is there on the scene and you play your game then as soon as the game starts 
the particle system is going to play. If you don't want it to play, if you want to play it yourself when something happens, uncheck this and then you can play it whenever you want. Next, max particles. The number of particles in the system will be limited by this number. Emission will be temporarily halted if this is reached. What this means is, uh, okay, it's set to a thousand, so there can only be a thousand particles. When that limit is reached, the particle system is not going to emit any more particles, I guess, until uh, those previous particles are destroyed. Let's change this value to, say, 5 and see what happens. So you have 5 here, no more emission. Once they are destroyed, 5 more are emitted. So that's what max particles does. Okay, now we will go into the modules. Each of these modules has its own properties. I'll explain all of them. So we start with emission. Emission of the emitter. This controls the rate at which particles are emitted as well as burst emissions. That is, you have rate over here and you have burst over here. Now rate would be the number of particles emitted per second or per distance unit. I'm, I've selected uh, time, so that means per second. It says currently 10 particles being emitted per second. Let's change this to 50. You can see the effect over here. The, the number of particles has increased. I'll change this back to, back to 10. Next you have bursts. This is an emission of extra particles at specific times during the duration of the system. So say for example I add a burst at 2 seconds and the burst should be of 100 particles and I'm going to turn off looping and stop the simulation. So the duration is 5 seconds. At 2 seconds there should be a burst. Let's see. As you can see there was a burst of 100 particles at the 2 second mark. So I'm going to remove this and check looping. Okay, next we have shape. This is the shape of the emitter itself. So you can see the shape selected here is cone. That's why you can see a cone shape. This is, like I said, the, sh the shape of the emitter. You can have either of these shapes. These, you already know, sphere, hemisphere is half a sphere. There's cone, there's box. And then you have mesh. In mesh, you can select what kind of mesh you want to use. If you have your own, uh, your own mesh that you have designed or some other mesh that you want to import from outside, you can use one of those as well. And you can also decide whether the particles will be emitted from the vertex, from the edge, or from the triangles. Um, I'm not going to go into much detail with this. I'm going to select cone again. Now, based on which shape you have selected, you'll get certain options. Let me explain some of these options to you. Okay, so in cone you have radius. Radius is basically how wide the cone is. And you have angle. This is how mm, how do I explain this? Well, okay, so you can see what happens when I set it to 90. The cone has pretty much become flat and the particles are now just spreading on the surface. Let me change this back to, I think it was 25. Okay. So that's what angle does. Next you have emit from. This lets you decide, this lets you decide where the particles will be emitted from. You have the options base, base shell, volume, and volume shell. Let me show you what base shell does. Okay, shell basically means the outer shell of your shape. So, 
currently uh, all the particles are coming from the inside and not from the outer shell let me increase this so as you can see there's no particles coming from the inside there are only particles coming from the outer shell and they're spreading in whatever direction then you have volume and volume shell they have their own effects as well next random direction this randomizes the starting direction of the particles so they won't really have any fixed directions they are just going in any direction next velocity over lifetime this is this controls the velocity of each particle during its lifetime to explain this I think I should use a curve let's see which example works best so I'm going to select X and edit the curve over here like this I increase the velocity to 1 or I could increase it even more and at the same time I can even reduce it along with its lifetime so by the end the velocity should go back to 0 no it should go even lower so you have based on how you set the curve you have that kind of an effect like in my case I have this sort of weird curving effect you can achieve many different effects with this you can play around with the X Y and Z axes and you also have okay here in this case when they ask you about space what this means is X, Y, and Z in local space would be affected by the rotation of the object. So, for example, if I rotate this object, watch what happens to this particle system. You can actually see the particle system, uh, sorry, the, the particles rotating as well. Sometimes you might not want that. Now, this rotation is because the space that you have selected is local so it's currently doing its calculations based on local space if you select world space you can rotate the object and that's not going to affect that's not going to move your particles away it was moving the particles before so that is velocity over lifetime okay so next we have limit velocity over lifetime this controls the velocity limit and damping of each particle during its lifetime so you can actually apply a limit to the velocity let's see how this works now you can either apply this limit on each axis separately or you can do it all together I am going to do it all together in this case to set the value you can either set a constant value or you can set it through a curve or you can set a random between two constants or a random between two curves I'm going to do it through a curve so okay I hope I don't explain this wrong uh, I'm going I have two points on this curve the first point is the starting point which is the speed of 5 and the end point is basically towards the end of the particles lifetime I'm going to reduce this to zero so as you can see towards the end of the particles lifetime the particle starts to slow down and eventually it's like just before it dies it's really really slow next you have damping this controls how much the velocity that exceeds the, the velocity limit 
should be dampened. You can set a value between 0 and 1. So 0 0.5 would be 50% and 1 would be 100%. So since this is set to 1, that's why you can see these particles slowing down a lot over here. Next, force over lifetime. Okay. This controls the force of each particle during its lifetime. I think this kind of works the same as uh, velocity over lifetime. I could be wrong. Uh, or maybe this is the amount of force that's applied at the start. No, that's the same as velocity. Okay, I'm sorry, I cannot explain what is the difference between velocity over lifetime and force over lifetime, but it has uh, the same effect when you change these values. So, force will start at, say, 5. Then you can add a curve, change this, and so you can add one point in the curve and change it change the value and it has the effect that you're seeing over here so that's force over lifetime oh also you have space which is the same as what velocity over lifetime did so yeah that's force over lifetime. Next, color over lifetime. This is basically, uh, this controls the color of each particle during its lifetime. So we can actually change these colors and we can set a whole lot of colors like, uh, okay, this is the starting point and this is the end point. Consider it in that way. This is the starting of the particle's life and this is the end. So this is set to white. We can change this one's color to say red. You can see the effect over here. It starts out white and as its life progresses it slowly starts to change its color slowly uh, moving towards red. You can add a bunch of different colors here like I can make this blue I can add another color over here make this yellow add something else over here I don't know make this green you can do a bunch of things also you can control the transparency by uh, moving these two markers around and you can actually create more markers here as well um, let me delete these Okay, so if I reduce this, if I set this at this location over here. Okay, wait. This needs one more here. Okay. Sorry about that. So, so I can set the alpha value of this marker to zero. And so, when it reaches to that point in its life, which is sort of the midpoint in its life, you can see the particles start to become transparent, regardless of their color. So, that's kind of what color over lifetime does. Next, color by speed. This controls the color of each particle based on its speed. To see this in effect, let's activate limit velocity over lifetime. So there's actually a change in speed. And now let's take a look at color by speed. So we can set a speed range over here and then we can set the colors. So basically, mm, okay, let me set the colors first. The color is white over here and over here, let's set it to red. And let's set this to 5. Now you can see sort of an opposite effect of what happened in the previous module. 
the particle starts out with a speed of 5 and that's why you see over here we have set red towards the maximum and it decreases over the lifetime of the particle and as it's de decreasing it's making its way towards 0 it starts to transition from red towards white and you can see that happening over here so that's what color by speed does next size over lifetime this is this controls the size of each particle during its lifetime so we can actually we can actually change the size make it either shrink or make it larger throughout its its uh, lifetime let's change this value a little bit okay take it down to zero so it starts out at, at a size of one and we are reducing it over its lifetime which by the end of its life it reaches somewhere here and you can see each particle as it reaches towards the end it starts to shrink next you have size by speed this works the same as color by speed only it changes the size along with the speed so let's set this to 5 and we can set the curve over here to it's already set to 1 let's set the least let's set the lowest point to 0 and we have the same effect so it starts out at a speed of 5 and so this is the size that it's going to be and then as it goes down the size reduces next rotation over lifetime I cannot explain this because what I'm emitting here are spheres then rotation by speed again I cannot explain this because spheres but by now you already know what lifetime and speed is and how rotation would be affected as well next external forces this controls the wind zones that each particle is affected by okay now let's enable this and set the multiplier to wait what is the max value okay it can go very high I'm not sure what the max value is but I'm going to set it to say 30 and then I'm going to add a wind zone okay wait where is the camera looking okay I'll come back to the scene view once I've played the game So as you can see the particles are being blown in that direction now watch what happens when I rotate the wind zone it's actually affecting which direction the particles are going in next collision this allows you to specify multiple collision planes that the particle can collide with let's enable this and see its properties okay so you can either set these particles to collide with any of the planes that you're specifying or you can set it to collide with the world the difference here would be if you select planes you can actually specify which planes the particles are going to collide with and they are only going to collide with those with those planes or uh, I guess any objects that you specify they won't collide with any of the objects that are not specified in this list you can add uh, as many as you want however if you set it to world just about any object 
just about any object that the particle collides with it will actually collide with that any object in the world the difference well the downside of uh, using world would be this particle system is going to become really heavy because there's a huge amount of calculations taking place but if you set it to space uh, sorry if you set it to planes then you're actually specifying which which surfaces the particles can collide with and so the calculations won't be that heavy because it's it, the system already knows which planes or which surfaces the particles are going to collide with so that's the difference between planes and world now let's add a plane the plane has been added over here you can select what it looks like either a grid or solid grid is actually better because then you can see it from up here as well if it's solid then you cannot uh, the reason why you cannot is because this plane is actually uh, upside down now usually if you would add a plane to your scene the plane would be facing upwards and so you can see a gray color surface but this plane is facing downwards so yeah you can see these particles are colliding with the plane I can add more uh, I can add more planes and the particles would bounce off of one plane and and then bounce off of another plane and yeah you can you can achieve various effects with this scale plane um, okay I haven't seen a lot of difference with this uh, yeah so I, I cannot explain what this is I mean as far as I know it just changes the size and the size is only changed for the sake of looking at it it's not actually changing so I don't know what that does next you have dampen when particles collide with the any of the surfaces they will lose a fraction of their speed now unless this value is set to zero the particle will actually start to lose its speed after collision so we can set this to maybe 0 0.1 and I think it goes only up to max of 1 does it yeah it only goes up to a max of 1 and if you set it to 1 then you can see the particle has lost its speed after it hits the surface we can have the same effect by rotating this transform and placing it down here was the particle system there okay so I'll just raise this and then lower the plane and let me also add gravity okay so you can see as soon as they collide with the surface they just stop moving if I set this to maybe 0 0.001 then the effect is not so strong they do slow down but not at such a fast rate let's change this back to 0 next we have bounce when particle collides the bounce is scaled with this value the bounce is the upwards motion in the plane normal direction so well you already know what bounce does I think this goes up to a max of 2 and you can see the effect as well okay so next you have lifetime loss when particle collides it will lose this fraction of its lifetime so you can actually set this in such a way that the particle will get destroyed when it hits the surface 
if you set it to 1 the particle is going to lose all of its life 1 being 100% so it loses that percentage of its life as soon as it hits the ground you can set it to a lower percentage and the particle will last a little longer before it gets destroyed next you have min kill speed when the particle collides and uh, sorry when particles collide and their speed is lower than this value they are killed uh, it's going to be a little complicated for me to explain this with an example but uh, I think this explanation is enough next you have particle radius this is again a little hard for me to explain so I hope you I hope you understand from these words the estimated size of a particle when colliding and this is to avoid clipping when collision with collision shape I hope you understand this I'm sorry I cannot explain it well next send collision message this is going to send a message to mm, I guess to any script or to any game object as soon as the particle collides with something if you select this then you can in your script you can call the on particle collision function and do whatever you want okay next sub emitters now sub emission of So sub emitters are basically emitters within our particle system like our particles can emit their own particles so each particle will have its own particle system. Let's enable this and see. So we have three places where we can three time frames where we can uh, use sub emitters that is at the birth of the particle and this is each particle we are talking about. At the collision of the particle or at the death of the particle so since we see collision taking place over here let's add wait let me stop this and let's add two sub emitters you can see the effect as soon as the particles hit the ground they all create their own particle systems and they start emitting particles this is not very uh, it can be a little heavy on your system so just be careful with this because you're adding more and more particle systems uh, birth would be when the particle is created and death would be when the particle dies so that would be here let me stop this and start it again so it's more like they are exploding after some time uh, the next we have next we have texture sheet animation I cannot explain this I could not find a good example for this sorry about that you can feel free to experiment on your own I mean after after learning about all these modules you I'm pretty sure you have enough knowledge you can experiment on your own the last module is renderer this specifies how particles are rendered so you don't necessarily have to make them look like spheres oh sorry yeah you don't necessarily have to make them look like spheres I did because it's for the sake of an example you can set their shape like you can add a texture to a material and add that material over here and that would change the shape of these particles I'll be doing that in some time we have render mode which is this defines the render mode of the particle renderer you can you have different options over here billboard stretched billboard horizontal billboard vertical billboard and mesh each has its own different result 
and in mesh of course you can set what kind of mesh you want you can actually set your own mesh as well something that you might have made and you can add a bunch of them it's not just one so you can have one for example cube one cylinder one sphere and one capsule so you have a bunch of different objects being emitted change this back to billboard I cannot explain normal direction because I couldn't understand what this is next material okay so I need to go and look for a texture and then create the material and I'll continue the recording after that okay so I imported unity's 2d asset package and I'm going to use one of the materials provided in that where is it here let's have a look at that material so maybe some of you can get some idea of what you have to do the shader selected here is particles additive let's see yeah so this is it you just do it like this but of course feel free to experiment with different shaders I don't know what kind of effect it's going to have so feel free to experiment next we have sort mode I cannot explain this sorry uh, sorting fudge again I cannot explain this but I'm just gonna read out what information is given here lower the number and most likely these particles will appear in front of other transparent objects including other particles so I guess that's what sorting fudge does it uh, it's a sort of sorting <laughs> I don't know next cast shadows uh, cast shadows basically tells unity whether this particle should cast shadows on other objects or not and next you have receive shadows and this tells unity whether shadows can be cast onto the particles or not so that kind of changes it changes you know you add a shadow to something when there's when there's a shadow falling on the particle it might its look might change a little bit next max particle size how large is a particle allowed to be on screen at most one is the entire viewport 0 0.5 is half the viewport I found this a little bit hard to understand so I cannot explain this to you either okay so the last two options over here left to explain are resimulate and wireframe resimulate determines whether or not property changes should be applied immediately to particles already generated by the system or not and uh, wireframe it shows the outlines of mesh objects used to show the particles in in the scene so this is what it looks like when you enable it okay so I guess that's it this is how you use unity's particle system I hope this tutorial was helpful check out these other videos as well the video on the top left teaches you about simple enemy AI the video on the top right teaches you about ray casting and the video on the bottom left teaches you how to use the interactive club I'm also accepting donations so if you would like to donate some money to support me you can send it to my PayPal email ID which is mentioned on the screen and in the description down below visit my channel for more videos don't forget to like share and subscribe leave your comments below and I'll see you guys next time. And these bitches saying names. Is he quote? Is he fame? Is he even still the same? Claiming Lord's boys, but we never seen him main. I don't cover now on album when he get the chance to hang. Like, damn. 1 through 4. Niggas acting like I never been through them.